Ben is such a good dog daddy. He's making Willow a path to play in. Me? I'm just watching while in my PJs, coffee in hand. Go ahead. Ask me if I felt guilty. Oh, heck no. I was already out shoveling with Willow at 4.30-ish in the morning in my PJs while Ben was still warm and cozy in bed. Willow now has her own racetrack that she loves to play ball in. Now let me show you what I did in our front hallway. Do you remember I shared last year that I painted this door front hall the wrong color? It was supposed to be the same as the sitting room, which is very similar. This has a little more blue, the other a little more green. So I put on my painter's apron that I've had about 20 years and I decided to paint it. But I ended up going back to white. I like how it looked in the small foyer area and I'm going to wallpaper and let the walls speak for the space. Now let's head into the dining room. I'm going to start a cozy fire. I'm actually using one of the fire starters that I made. I will put the link for those above. And also I'm going to be making my pink passion cocktail and I thought I would show you how I do it. This recipe is on my website under Pink Passion. All right, so I'm gonna take my shaker here and I'm gonna mix right in that. The only thing you are not going to put in there is your soda water. That's to top it off afterwards. So I'm gonna first do one and a half ounces of the Pink Passion liqueur. And if you don't have a shot glass and sometimes it's marked with the one ounce, or if you don't have one of these, what you can do is two tablespoons equals one ounce. But I like to, to pour from this, so I'm going to do, let's see, one and a half. And this is a very pretty color. Wait till you see how this changes. Actually, let me see if I can I'll pour a little bit in here. It has a very Pretty, pretty color. All right, so we have the one and a half ounces of the passion liqueur, and this will make two drinks the way that I'm making this today. Right. Now I'm going to do the same one and a half ounces of watermelon pucker. This also smells like Jolly Ranchers, and um, I know there's many recipes out there. Oh my, oh my gosh, I'm very. I love scents. I know maybe some of you have noticed that whenever I cook or clean, I'm always smelling things. I don't know, it's, it may be odd to some, but that's just what I do. So I'm gonna do the same here, one and a half. One, and then a half. It's one and a half ounces of the triple sec. Oops, one. And let's see, let me just wipe up my mess here. So wasn't, this will get sticky. The triple sec will get sticky. And then it's three ounces of the pink lemonade. So let's see. We use the larger size, which is the, I believe it's one and a half. So I'm just gonna put two in here to make my three ounces. Okay, now I'm gonna put some ice in. One of my consignment finds has a little horse on the front. It's in my sitting room with, on the, with all my whiskey and, and whatnot. Okay. I'm gonna shake this up real good. When it gets so cold you can't hold it, that's usually when I, I stop my shaking. Okay. 
You ready to see how pretty this color is? Now I'm only going to fill these up part way and this type of glass I can already tell that it might not have enough space for a floating fruit so I might do a, a little garnish on the rim. And there's still a little extra in here. The seltzer water, is, you could have this without the seltzer water or the soda water but it is kind of tart and um, this also spreads out the drink so you could even make for very weak cocktails if you'd like. Um, oh, oh no! <laughs> Welcome to my world. Oh. So in the beginning of my podcast, it says a little bit like Martha Stewart, a little like Ina Garten. This is the Lucille Ball part. Oh. Okay. Wow. I don't know why that happened because this was not shaking. Well, it did. I don't know. I can't even tell you. So we're just going to pour a little bit here. And it has a little bubbly, like a glass of champagne. I have, it's so funny. I've got my, my coffee here and I'm making cocktails at 11 in the morning. I figured they make mimosas and Bloody Marys so people can drink in the morning. I make videos going into the afternoon. One's a little darker than the other. Oh, that's good. It's not too sweet. I don't like sweet drinks. Um, and it's not too tart. I'm trying to, how I can explain it. Probably if you were, you know, sipping on a watermelon candy. It's just like that. And if you don't like it as sweet, you could add um, a little, I would say maybe a little bit of lime juice if you wanted, a squeeze of lime or even garnish it with lime. But I'm going to cut these fruits and see if either of them fit in that. Let me just actually pour some in a martini glass here. And I'll give myself some extra space so I can at least float the fruit there. You could, of course, modify this too if you wanted to add more lemonade. Um, this I call myself a sipologist. I'm not a bartender, but I'm a sipologist. I actually create by smelling, by testing, by tasting. Um, and you can do this too. So I grabbed a few things to garnish and I'm going to keep my glasses on because I like my digits where they are. And these are very sharp knives. Um, just gonna clean up my table here again a bit more. So I thought I'd just show you a couple ways that I like to garnish things and once again get creative do what you like. But I'm gonna first use the star fruit also known as the carambola. If, all right these are so pretty. Aren't those pretty? You can either float it on the top or for this one, maybe I will cut it, put a little slice, just take out a little bit of piece just so that it fits well on the rim. And for this one, I think I'll put it on the edge like that. For the larger martini glass, I'm going to do a blood orange. So this is another flavor and another scent that I love and it has some really great color. So you could just float that on the top and then you'd sip around it. And then what else do I have? Oh, my lime. Somebody asked on one of the other videos how I made the curly Q orange that was in my potpourri. So what I do is I like to take whatever fruit, a lemon, a lime, an orange, and I use my peeler. I'm gonna go around the fruit and I'm just getting the top level or top layer. And this will come out thicker than I want it originally. 
But what I'm gonna do afterwards, this one kind of cut off me. I'm gonna take my kitchen scissors. Bartenders out there, I know you have your own tricks. This was mine. So I have a nice thin strip of the citrus peel and then I put it around a skewer or if I have a nice long one, I would use a pencil and I just put it on here. Now for the potpourri, I let it dry and I held it, but I'm just gonna hold this here for a sec. When you take it off, it's a curly cue. The lime was a little smaller than I wanted to use, so I decided to use the blood orange. Now, if I was cutting this slower, I wouldn't have got as much of the pith, but I was trying to get as much of just the rind or the zest as possible. Either way, um, it will work out. Once again, I'm just simply cutting it into a strip that I will then put around the skewer and put into my cocktail. And there you have it, the pink passion. Now I used some of the footed stemware that I have and it just elevates it, no pun intended, but you can use any glassware that you would like. I just think these are very pretty. Of course I couldn't let the macarons go to waste, so I ended up enjoying at least one with another cup of coffee and then I saved the others for later. Now here in this photo there is a rose here, it is a faux rose. I have about 20 in stock in different colors. Is this something some of you might like if I were to put it on my online store? Now for the paper white update. Remember what these looked like before? I just planted the bulbs. I have all the twigs around and some pine cones. Well, they grew beautifully and they are so nice and tall and fragrant. My allergies realize how fragrant they are, but the twigs worked perfectly. They're all nice and straight and not flopping over and not breaking. So it was a success. Rethinking the Butler's Pantry Tavern Room What was once an enclosed cozy sitting room where we used to sit and drink our coffee in comfy chairs, I opened up a doorway from the kitchen and this had plans, or we were going to make this a butler's pantry and a tavern. Right now this is set up for one of our past holidays. But now that we're thinking of moving, I'm kind of reassessing this idea. I'm not sure I'm going to do built-ins or if I'm just going to find a beautiful hutch, but this is kind of a thought of where I'm going. So considering that we might be moving, I could do something like a freestanding built-in, such as this piece that I found at Ethan Allen. And this is an item that I actually did purchase just yesterday at a resale shop. I'm going to be showing you a video of some things that I found this week, but this also could go in the space with beautiful dishes and whatnot, but the other would hide a bit more. Or I created this idea, this plan here, it's kind of an L shape. It's not the taverny look that we were thinking, but once again, it wouldn't be for everybody else uh, who might be house hunting. So this pantry would be a little more versatile. It has the cabinetry, shelves. I put a built-in under the window, which the window you can see is not there because when I put up wallpaper, it disappeared some for some reason. I'm still working on this program. But I do have somebody coming by this Wednesday just to take a look at the space and to price out this particular plan with a few tweaks, but it would give me a space for recycling bins and we could still put our beer and wine fridge there and a coffee station. So I'm just still trying to figure out which way is the best way for us to go. If we're gonna stay here five to 10 years, I would do the built-in, 
But if it's something that we find a house this spring, we put the home in the market, I might want to find something that we take along with us. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Before I let you go, I know I promised I was going to talk about some spring gardening. I'm going to show that in a future video. I went out and purchased some seeds and I visited a greenhouse. I'm going to show you that visit. And I know many of you have mentioned that you missed the midweek videos. So my hopes are is when I can create something that I can put up fairly quickly that is still quality, I will do some weekend videos and then I will also be posting some Sunday videos. They are just very time consuming and I want to make sure I have a balance in my life, but I do also want to make sure I'm bringing you some fun quality information. With that said, next week we are going to have a midweek video. I'm going to take you consignment shopping. I purchased some furniture, I purchased some books, and then we're going to also visit a greenhouse and I'm going to go over some of the seeds that I'm going to be starting very soon here for my summer garden. But for now, this is Linda Smith Davis, your fine living muse from New England Fine Living helping you find your own version of fine living for your home and lifestyle, no matter how simple, no matter how grand, and no matter where you live. Bye now.